been a while since I've done a Ranked Seasons gameplay on the channel. It's been a lot of Reds franchise of late when I have been uploading. Of course, the NFL Draft kind of had, a, had me a little bit more football focused, but I pretty much built an entire Yankees offense because of the Aaron Judge captain that gives you a pretty large boost when you get him to Tier 3, which we have him. So plus 10 power right and left and plus 15 arm strength. You're not running on any of my outfielders. The lowest arm is actually Reggie in right with 94, which is still pretty good, obviously. Jorge is unbelievable. I've gone 12-0 a couple of times since he's come out, and I just decided not to sell him. I think on the on the third time, I think that I think I've gone 12 and 0 three times. Maybe it's only twice. Anyway, doesn't matter. He's pretty unbelievable. This Yankees team is just a phenomenal bunch, and, and Lou Gehrig's over here that you can't see. But I think what we're gonna do is try and make World Series. Haven't done it yet. Only six and 0 currently in ranked seasons. But what better time than right now? To grind and make World Series. Probably will stream it. Maybe. Twitch.tv slash Bengal. Check it out. And here we go. He's got the Buck O'Neill Tier 3 boost. But only Jackie Robinson in the lineup. Okay, so that's... Only two players are getting boosted. It's not a terrible team. Uh, I, I think we're throwing Bob Gibson on the mound. So he hopefully should just shut this guy down. I think I am the home team as well. So we've got a pretty good advantage to start this one off. Hopefully we can come out and hit. Haven't played the game in a couple of days. So, let's see how this goes. You know, he's actually got the 99 Tatis as well. I just picked this card up for co-op the other night, and he seemed pretty good. He'll definitely get his own video on the channel at some point. One of my favorite players, if not my favorite player in baseball, despite uh, not even playing on the Yankees, which is my favorite team. Just an electric player. Glad to see him back. I know the whole uh, steroid thing is not going to sit well with some people, but the way I figure, you know, Obviously, you know, screwed up, made a mistake, but never used steroids when he was actually playing. So I don't think it taints any of his uh, previous numbers. And uh, came back two home run game off Clayton Kershaw a night or so ago. So I think he's starting to get locked back in. He's really free swinging right now. But um, yeah, I, it, just a super exciting player and we'll have a bit. And we're gonna move on to the next player. Okay, he knew it was gonna happen. I don't, I don't not respect it. I get it. I keep matching up with people that don't want to play. I don't get what's going on. Either they back out or they make me wait a while. Finally, we get somebody, and they took a little bit of a second as well. They have also Jackie Robinson in the lineup and Buck O'Neill, but uh, yeah, not the best team. I usually like to start with a fastball, which is also a sinker. Inside, I just want to see what their timing is going to be because that's really going to tell me how this game's gonna go a lot of the time. You know, if, if they can hit the fastball right away as he gets late jammed, rewarded, always hate that, uh, but it, it really tells you how the game's gonna go. If they're ready to turn, it, it's probably gonna be a little bit tougher. If not, I'm just gonna go to the well and pretty much throw a lot of fastballs and usually a lot of sinkers is the pitch. I don't usually like to throw a ton of four seamers even though I think with Bob Gibson, we definitely could. He's got outlier on the fastball. We can really dial it up to 101 plus pretty much every single pitch. I just think it's a little bit easier to hit. The pitch stays straight a little bit longer, but uh, I'll show you here. Go fastball and that's just 102, easy gas. I just think it's a little bit easier to hit. But obviously some people still have trouble with it. I don't know why that's only 100. He has outlier. I don't know why it's coming in at only 100. I know that it's funny to say only 100. It's because it's outside. Now I've thrown the fastball three times on that out, like across Bob Gibson's body, only at 100. Can he only throw 101 plus on the inside part of the plate? Seems weird, I don't know. Now I wanna say this is the first time I've used Babe Ruth in ranked seasons. So I'm kind of excited to see what he can do. My PCI is shockingly not massive. We're having 125, 125 with Babe Ruth here against righties. Well, I guess the uh, power doesn't really matter. Just 125 contact determines that PCI size. When there's a runner on second and third, or second or third, clutch is that main attribute. And my patience is not that good right now. Really just got to wait on my pitch. 
Not doing it. Just swung it like three balls in a row. The name of the game in MLB The Show is Be Patient. A lot of these really look like they're going to be strikes and they fall out of the zone at the last second. Just force this guy to come into the strike zone and then when he eventually does, you know, obliterate the ball. And I'm fine with the take there. Probably a home run type pitch. Count goes 3-1. And we might have actually just pulled this one out of here. Cutter away early and we're going to yank it out. Not the best timing. Jorge's got a great swing though. And hits it 400 feet away to right center. But this guy, you know, I don't think he's going to make a ton of mistakes on the mound. We just have to be ready to hit. And when we see one, can't wait. But everything is on the black. I mean, every single pitch is on the corner of the zone. And we're going to pop up with Lou Gehrig there to end the inning. Hitting not really a uh, strong suit of mine at the moment. We're going to try to figure it out as we go through this game because only one run at this point, I would say, is fairly unacceptable. So we're just going to keep trying to pitch. I don't know that he's really going to be able to score many runs. We've seen the level of hitting, I think, from my opponent. But his pitching, you know, he's consistently throwing the ball, I would assume, right where he wants it. Everything's on the black. Everything's very, very close to being a ball if it's in the strike zone and vice versa. So we just got to stay patient, change my approach a little bit. And I really just try to hit mistakes if they eventually come, which I don't think they will. This is going to be a tough game to score runs, I think. Really should have warmed up, I think, is where I am right now. Really, really should have warmed up. My pitch recognition is atrocious. My timing is terrible. And my PCI placement all around is bad. Not too terrible there with Glaber Torres staying on that outside pitch, driving it the other way for a double. Not bad here with two outs. Just really haven't shown enough to think that I'm going to get that run in. Aaron Judge has tremendous power. We just have to square something up. And that's going to be a good rip. Throws a fastball down. Really easy pitch to hit. We're going to hold one. Take the run. Go up 2-0. Good RBI. Two out hit for Aaron Judge. Exactly what we wanted. And Jeter's got to give us a really good chance here. And that's such a good pitch to hit. Just tried so hard not to be super early on that, not to pull down under that because we saw it floating in, stayed back on it, didn't move my PCI down quite enough to touch that, and Jeter grounds out. But again, this guy's really placing everything in difficult to hit spots. I I'm going to keep saying the same thing. Um, I think we can do better than this, but I need to be way more patient at the plate. We're not really going to get mistakes to, to hit. That's the thing is somebody using, uh, using pinpoint or good with pure analog. You know, you can put the pitches pretty much exactly where you want at a really consistent rate. So you're not going to get anything down the middle. It just doesn't happen. Yeah, I think in one of these spots, the trick is going to be be more aggressive. I, I feel like I'm kind of waiting on everything. Just, oh, is it going to be near the zone? We just got to swing if it's outside the zone. I don't. I don't know what else to do. I mean, because that pitch could have easily struck me out right there. That's probably a bad take. But we just got to, like, attack and try to get something to hit. Because right now, it's basically impossible to get on. I'm just getting dotted up consistently. Rip that one 107 mile per hour out. But every pitch is right on the black. It's just, uh, every at-bat's really tough right now. And this guy doesn't even have uh, sinkers and cutters. If there were sinkers and cutters, I think he actually does have, have a cutter, but, uh, if that was in the arsenal, both pitches, I would be completely destroyed at the plate right now as another early home run goes out. Mickey Mantle off the foul pole. He might have quit, which would be A-OK -okay with me. That game was very unfun to play. Uh, that was terrible. All right, let's talk some trash. Good try. See how that goes. We have a message back. Oh, it's a, it's a team issue. Jeter, good start to the game. But yeah, MLB The Show is one of those more skill-based games when things are working properly. Like, yeah, there are way too many lineouts and shit hits all the time. But uh, it's not really a game where, you know, having a god squad gives you a massive advantage. Obviously, it's good to have those guys. But I think if you took a player who has, you know, never played the game before and give them the best team in the game... They wouldn't be any good. They'd be terrible. Versus if you do that in Madden, for example, I think they could really have a decent chance to beat someone who's better than they are. But in this game, I could feel pretty good about beating someone with a silver or gold team 
if they had all diamonds. If, you know, if I feel that confident in, in my skill, which I'm not playing that well right now, but I, I definitely, definitely think I could. As uh, Jorge gets drilled, you know, have bases loaded for Mickey Mantle, Bob Gibson off to a shaky start. I was hoping that was going to continue out ahead of 102. Got to sit back on that a little bit more. And that's a good rip. Perfect, perfect in a right. I think we're going to go station to station here. Not going to run on that arm. We definitely would have had the run easy now that I'm seeing that throw. But no outs in the inning. Not going to give him one for free. Not going to risk that. And uh, we'll just keep on working here. We got Lou Gehrig up. I mean, there are no easy outs on this team except for maybe Aaron Judge. But he has a big hit in this video already as I get a hanger and just completely miss it man I don't even know how we make contact on that that's kind of BS it's gonna be a double play we actually goes home with it and then he goes to second nobody's gonna be out what a complete screw up he should have just gone home at that point cancels the throw home to go to second not in time at second doesn't get the turn we piece that up by the way 105 off the bat that was gonna be a really rough double play to end the inning I can't even feel bad about that I mean, I'm all over it. Are we frozen? What's happening? Did I turn the console off? All right, there goes another one. Joe Ryan on the mound. He's got a cap, which I think is the dumbest thing about MLB The Show, and, and there are many of them. But uh, that's pretty, pretty bad. Like, they really want to shine or put a light on their legends, yet you can have the best card in the game as a created player. It's so stupid. Oh, okay. Now, this guy was early on a fastball away, uh, lefty-righty. So, I'm like, okay, he's going to be sitting heater. And then righty-righty, Mike Trout comes up. He was perfect, perfect to center field on a cutter away. What a good swing. So, I clearly misinterpreted what was going on because very late on that inside sinker. And I think we're going to see a similar result here. Uh, big mistake to Mike Trout. We're playing down, which, you know what? Adds a little bit more appeal to the video, I think. Because who knows what's going to happen? Not going to run through this guy, potentially. And Joey Gallo goes yard. Cut her away. Now, <laughs> this time I tried it to a lefty bat. Still didn't work. And it's different action, too. Because the cutter was here, home run to a lefty. Cutter was here, home run to a righty. Try to get it off the plate. There's good swings from him. You got to give him credit. Take the out, though. All right, got a hit. Now, Joe Ryan does not really have an incredible pitch mix. I'm interested to see what his release looks like. Seems pretty readable. Now, we might have trouble because the pitch differentials are pretty big. I would say that the fastball looks significantly faster than the, the splitter. And certainly the curveball we saw very early on that 94 mile per hour fastball up in the zone. Certainly not going to see that again. So we can really sit off speed here, I would guess. And we got off speed. I need that to tail away from Trout. It's going to. Jeter off the wall. 94 speed. We're going to hold second with a leadoff double. And just like that, the tying run is at the plate. And that's the type of thing that being early can, uh, can do for you. Because if they throw that fastball and be like, wow, they were so early on the fastball. I cannot go back to that. You can sit off speed entirely, even though it was low. We're still able to sit back, square it up, and drive it to right center. You know, figuring out what pitch your opponent is going to throw is a really, really good way to get better at the game. And, you know, I, I think we knew exactly what we we're going to get for the most part. And uh, we were able to crush it. I'm really going to have to slow the bat down if I'm going to hit a fastball, though. I absolutely love getting fastballs because they're super easy to hit. It's just a straight line. Off-speed can get a little bit more challenging. But uh, I need to be a little bit less early on these. Because 90, 94 is just like, I don't know, looks very slow in the game. I'm going to get Jeter over to third at least. We got to get that run in. At least make this a one-run game. Didn't do everything I wanted to in that AB. A little bit unfortunate, but at least we got the runner over. That's a good rip. Is that actually going to be two? Oh, Trout's going to dive and stop it. We're going to hold one, but Jorge drives in Jeter. 
Rapture, not the first time that's happened in real life. And got Mickey Mantle coming up. Now, I keep getting the fastball up. I'm so early on it. But I, I worry if I really sit back, I'm just going to be late and I'm going to totally miss my pitch, miss my opportunity like I did just there. So it, there's a really fine line. And the pitch is obviously out of the zone anyway. But I'm just going to keep being early and hopefully make micro adjustments over the course of the game to start killing the fastball. And he starts me off with a curveball a lot and has gone back to the fastball pretty much every time after that. So again, just know what your opponent's gonna do. It makes the game a lot easier. I'm, I'm saying pretty much every at bat to a lefty has started off with a curveball, and then he's immediately followed it with a fastball up. Just very, very predictable. And there's another curveball. I'm on top of it because I got antsy. But uh, I'm probably going to destroy someone that's as predictable as this. Oh, Glaber with the web gem diving stop. Unbelievable play from Glaber Torres to take away a base hit. That was pieced up. Great swing from my opponent. And uh, Glaber just made a better play. There's the curveball. I guess we're even because I couldn't have squared that up any better pretty much. Only 100 off the bat. We got a curveball. And he might start with a curveball again. And it's his fourth pitch. It's not even that good. But as I said, my opponent is extremely predictable. Almost to the point of where they're like doing a challenge or something. It's always curveball and then fastball up. I don't know what the third pitch is going to be. But we get the same combination every single at bat. That's an easy way to lose games. I'm so, How am I that? Look at my PCI placement, dude. I just can't sit back on that. I've seen it a couple times now. How am I this early on that? Did I get it? I think we did. It's a decent swing from Jorge. It's kind of floating out there, and it is gone. Kind of a pop fly type swing for the PCI contact. Wasn't too bad. Only 359. But, uh, take the home run. And that's gone. Fastball to start the count. I think he just auto pitched maybe? I don't know. And, oh, I thought we were going to get a rage quit there. Nope. All right. How do I not hit that? 108 off the bat. Ground out. We're going to the fourth. And it's, it's, I can't get a double play because he, like, check swing bunts it into play. It's really annoying. Uh, what is that? All right. <sighs> That's crazy. We're going to get him at two, though. Great base running. Uh, how is this even a close game? That is just not a swing. Is it? I, I don't know how I <laughs> cannot complain in this video. It's just not possible, I guess. But it's, it's getting very frustrating. I feel like I should have scored 15 runs by now. Against the guy that starts every at bat, curveball, fastball. There's the curveball. I'm sure the fastball's up next. It wasn't. That's got to get out, though. Glaber, please! A Glabomb! From Glayrod! Nope, that's not. Uh, Glaber Torres goes yard. It's so weird seeing we're number 14 because they took the World Baseball Classic numbers. But uh, Glaber thankfully had the strength to get that one out of here. Judge hitting 733 for me, not too bad. Here's the curveball. I've pretty much just been taking it at this point. Although, that one hung right down the middle, so I think we were kind of forced to swing. Be late, be great, just late, bomb. Although, when you're just late on a pitch down the middle, obviously it's going to be to the right side. Big timing window, though. These pitches just come in so slow uh, from what I'm used to. That's a terrible swing. There's something about a hanger down the middle that I struggle with. I think it's because I'm bad. There was the curveball. Let me hit the fastball, please. I cannot keep it fair. It's so frustrating. It's so frustrating. He's gone slider away a lot to lefties as well. That one's crushed. Finally, Babe Ruth does something. 
Throw me a splitter essentially right down the middle. That's the result we need to get. That's exactly what we need to happen when that happens. And this is going to be a very different vibe. Camilo Duval throws hard. That's what he does. But that's better for me. Hip, hip. Jorge Posada hits one out. It's nine to three. Just needed something to speed up the bat a little bit. There we go, Babe Ruth, starting off the bottom of the fifth nicely. This is a, uh, oh, I'm out, actually. That's out, though. Anthony Volpe, bomb. Dude, I love facing pitchers that throw hard, if you guys couldn't tell. The off-speed guys, I can't handle, because even when they throw the fastball, I'm so out in front of it. But a guy like Camilo Duvall really is exactly what I'm looking for. He goes slider there. Interesting. Good slide step. Nope. All right, 10-3 as we go into the sixth. I feel like this video has been all over the place. <laughs> I don't really know. You know, the, always the first video of the day, I feel like I just can't speak. And there really is a rhythm to it. I'm not saying, like, you know, video making is the toughest thing in the world. But usually I pride myself on being articulate and, you know, able to string sentences together quite well and really describe exactly what's going on with personality involved as well. And then half the time I'm recording these videos, you know, when it's the first one of the day, just like, is anything you said in the last 30 seconds, did any of that make sense even at all to anyone? Because if I'm saying it and it's not clicking as soon as it's out of my mouth, surely for people that don't, live in my brain and I just diagnosed myself as schizophrenic I may have uh, but surely none of you are gonna have any idea what I'm talking about so I gotta I gotta be better you know not only should I have played a warm-up game probably should have done a few warm-up videos to get into the rhythm of talking while playing but it's all right we're up by seven still plenty of opportunity to mercy this guy just got to start hitting a little bit better. And I've pretty much, I, I talked about, you know, being predictable. I've thrown sinkers inside of this guy the entire game as soon as I realized he couldn't hit it. And I've been so predictable. But now I know that he's sitting on it. You know, I'm mixing in slurs down and away. But I still want to make it look like the sinker. So I'm kind of putting it more towards the middle, but making sure it's down out of the strike zone. So it's tough to, you know, pull it out for home runs. But, uh... I've been throwing a lot of sinkers in and really avoiding the strike zone for the most part. I think this guy is going to get a reality check after or check after that terrible swing and be super late on that pitch. Though it looked like he was actually ready to pull it, but it's off the plate. Tough one to pull. That's out. Surely. Stay fair. Stay fair. Jorge again. This one off the foul pole in left. Four for four for Jorge Posada, and that might be the game. Goodbye. Now, the rough part about playing ranked seasons as we super fracture Derek Jeter. That looks beautiful. Uh, the rough part about playing ranked seasons is uh, everyone quits. So I can never get my thumbnail for a video. So that's unfortunate. But uh, all in all, you know, not too bad. We won every game. I didn't hit nearly as well as I would have liked. We pitched well enough. Jorge is unbelievable. He's so good, and I love him. And that's going to be the video. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed a return to ranked seasons, return to actually playing somebody. I'm sure you're going to be begging for Red's franchise. I'll probably record it at some point here in the near future. But that's going to do it for the video, guys. Hopefully, you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.